Welcome to the Winging It Travel Podcast with me, James Hammond, where every Monday I'll be joined by a guest to talk about their travel stories, travel tips, backpacking advice, and so much more. Right now, I'm taking the podcast on the road traveling with me. So tune in every week for short form episodes detailing all my travels alongside my Monday guest episode. Are you a backpacker, traveler, gap year student, or simply someone who loves to travel? Then this is the podcast for you. This is a casual, informative podcast designed for you to inspire you to travel. There'll be stories to tell, tips to share, and experiences to inspire. Welcome to the show. Hey, yeah, just a quick one. I just want to say there are many ways to support this podcast. You can buy me a coffee and help support the podcast with $5. Or you can go to my merch store with the affiliate link with TeePublic, where there's plenty of merch available to buy, such as T-shirts, jumpers, hoodies, and also some children's clothing. Thirdly, which is free, you can also rate and review this podcast on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Podchaser, or Good Pods. Also, you can find me on social media on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and TikTok. Simply just search for Winging It Travel Podcast, and you'll find me displaying all my social media content for traveling, podcasts, and other stuff. Hello, and welcome to the second installment of the Oman Road Trip series. And today I'm going to cover Wadi Badi Khalid, Wahiba Sands and Mazira Island. So after seeing the green turtle at Ras Al Jins, we got up early for breakfast, which was by the hostel, and then we headed to Wadi Bani Khalid. Now, Wadi Bani is a bit like the Bimar sinkhole. It's like a little oasis in the middle of the desert and it has like waters you can go into. And this particular one has... I think three pools. You can walk up to pool two and three in like a cave scenario. And it's free entry, as most sites are in Oman. It took about an hour to get to Wadi Bani Khalid, and you sort of have to go up and down these mountains to reach it. And my word, this was a hot day. And I'm talking 34, 35 degrees, I think. And super busy. Popular with locals, I guess, when it's super hot like this. Um, as we saw the locals go in there and jump off the little bridges into the pools and go for a swim and obviously popular with tourists too. So we parked up, just about found a space and walked in. The weirdest thing that we saw first was the main pool, which is kind of the first thing you see and it's quite big, had no one in it. Now this was around midday, so maybe... And you may think, oh, we left early and why is it already midday? It's because we stopped off in Sir to visit that fantastic cafe where we had coffee the day before, called Brew Oz Speciality Coffee. So anyway, we walked in, no one in the pool, and we didn't want to walk up to the cave because it's super hot. We got to carry all stuff, and we're a bit, bit miffed out, really, about why no one's in there. But we did actually eventually go in because we saw a couple of families go in, and this just wasn't as good as Bimar Sinkhole, if I'm honest. Like, it's a bit muddy, the water. It's very cool, and you need to adhere to the dress code there, so I went in with a T-shirt. But just didn't feel as good or as nice as Bimar Sinkhole. But it was refreshing. I probably stayed in the water probably 30 to 40 minutes and then got out, refreshed, cleaned up and went straight out. I guess my only advice for this place is, yeah, you could probably actually walk up to the caves. It's probably quite good. If you're a bit of a diver, you can jump off the bridge into the water. Some locals are doing that, like youngsters. Uh, people crowding around to watch that. That's quite cool. So enjoy the dip but a bit too hot and also it's free so you can't complain but maybe next time if I ever did go again I probably would walk up to the pools in the caves to see what they're about a lot of people were coming down from there and after that it was another short drive to a place called Al Wasil and we're meeting the owner of the camp retreat that we're going to stay at in the Wahiba Sands Desert we booked with a company called Desert Retreat Camp for 43 reals for a night for a tent that's quite expensive and this is going to be fairly similar to the Jordan experience the Bedouin experience we had there in Wadi Rum but I didn't realise until afterwards I knew potentially there might be a fee but kind of forgot my mind but the guy actually charged 25 real for a return journey into the camp so all in all that's about 68 reals for the experience and that is very very expensive and what do you get for that experience? You get picked up, you get driven in to the desert 
and you have your own tent to yourself it's got a double bed in there and you have your own toilet as well and there's like a communal area for dinner breakfast and having tea and you're surrounded by the most amazing sand dunes really it really was the idyllic Amani desert that I was expecting pretty much what happened was we got driven in dropped off had tea with the owner and some fruit had a little chat met another couple of guys there who were from Belgium I think one was a teacher one was a doctor and then pretty much got left alone the owner sort of drove off back into town I guess to where he lived and we're kind of left with the guys who worked there and I don't think it was the traditional Bedouin experience that the Belgian couple were kind of expecting and I wasn't really too fussed with that because we had that in Wadi Rum but for the price that we paid it was just not worth it I don't think the best bit about it was that he the owner drove us up to one of the sand dunes for sunset and that was amazing to see about 5 36 p.m the sun coming down and quite windy up there but great views of the desert literally known about and then next morning we got driven back to town and done a bit of sand bashing for us which is in his suv driving up sand dunes that was a nice little five ten minutes of activity for us which the belgian couple ordered the day before and they had about an hour of that and they said that was really good maybe the only thing i'd say is that it was towards the end of the season i think they're closing maybe one or two days after that and they're starting to wind down so maybe you wouldn't get the full experience but i guess if you still pay that much you should expect that um it's nice to stay in a tent in a desert super quiet amazing scenery great stars at night quite comfortable and just a bit of tad expensive in my opinion Next morning we got dropped off back in town to Awasil, picked up our car and then we're heading to Shanna Port in the south to get a ferry over to Masira Island. Before that we had breakfast in the camp and the green peas, I don't even know what it was, like curried green peas for breakfast was amazing. That was cooked by one of the, the workers at the camp. That was sensational. No idea what it's called but loved that. And it's going to take us around four hours to get down south to that port. And I think at this point, we did not expect to get the 3pm ferry. We didn't book a ticket. We just wanted to get down there and see what was going on. And then on the way, we stopped off for a coffee because we needed a proper coffee. So we went to the local town of Bidia and went to Vocaf, V-O-E, and got possibly the best value coffee of the whole trip in Amman. It was one real for two Americanos and fantastic taste in coffee. Absolutely loved it. Drove off, still no real urgency, I'd say, but just getting there in good time. But about halfway through the journey, we got to a place called Better Speciality Coffee, about two hours in, I'd say, in a place called Al Ashkara. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that right. And then we realised, oh, if we get a slight move on here, we could get there for the 3 p.m. ferry. And predictions would say that we get there for 2.30 p.m. at the office. So we got a coffee done, drove off, got a little bit lost out of that town. It's a bit stressful, got some petrol, finally got back on the main road. Again, no one on these Omani roads. And straight down to Shanna Port. And we did make our way there and got there about 25 minutes past two. And as you go into Shanna Port, it's just a really weird sort of area, really. You come off the main road and you almost go on a like, really long pier for like, hours it's not hours it's like half an hour but you smash it down the pier and then at the end of the pier you see some local boats and you see another little pier which goes out towards the main government boat but to the left of that is the office so we slipped in there parked up straight in no queue got a ticket for 16 real one way which includes the car and two people picked up the ticket didn't get returned we're not sure what day we're going to return yet but same price coming back as well but you can get at the office on the island and drove pretty much straight onto the ferry. Fairly smooth process, no real queue. I just jumped in and got the boat. I think that's the way you do things there. And for one hour, pretty smooth. I think Emma was worried about the waviness of the water, but that was a pretty cool day to go on the boat. Great views and not too bad. Got to the other side in about an hour and you arrive into the town called Hilf. And straight away, we went to the supermarket to get food and drink for our camping experience. We didn't really know where to go on the island, but we thought about 4, 4.30 p.m. there, we're not going to hang about here. So we got our supplies in and drove south. After about an hour of driving around, we, we thought we found a spot 
around the Sir Masira part of the island. It's near a few beach camps, actually, so obviously it's not a bad place to camp. And we found us little, like, covering on the beach where you can sit in and maybe cook some food. So we thought that was a good place to pitch a tent. Uh, it's by the coast, so we're going to get a breeze. That'd be nice. And it's also a pretty quiet area. I think we saw one other car the whole night. The only mare with that whole situation there was the ants. They were huge, and they are freaking me out. But got set up, got the tent out, cooked some dinner, had a little bit of a freak out. I wasn't sure where we were doing the right thing, but after setting down after dinner, classic pasta meal, of course, sat there on the beach in the dark, in the camping chair, in the wind, and didn't mind it in the end, and didn't have a too bad a sleep. Woke up next morning, I didn't feel like it was too hot, nice and cool, and we had a great breakfast next morning before setting off to see the island. So thankfully it weren't too hot next morning, nice and breezy, woke up, had breakfast, and went back into town for a coffee first of all. One contraption that we used before we set off, which was great with the camping facilities, was the portable shower. We haven't really entertained that yet, but we got out because we were a little bit hot and probably needed a bit of a wash. And this thing, you just press the pump and it comes out. And the water sort of is like a shower. You have to hold it and it comes out. It's decent pressure. But one problem is... In Amman, you don't really want to be naked showering. I think that's probably illegal. I'm not sure what the rules are on that. But we pretty much did. There's no one on the road next to where we were. No one on the beach where we were. And pretty much five-minute shower, got it done, and it made the morning and the day so much better. Great little contraption, breakfast, went into town to a speciality coffee place called Event and got an Americano and planned our trip on the island. The biggest highlight before we set off was on the beach after, I think, breakfast, shower, probably brush your teeth, about to go, pretty much. And there's an Omani Air Force base on the island. And I heard this plane come in, and this is like a almost like a World War II-style plane, old-school plane, maybe a training plane. And he came over quite close in terms of like us to him, and I gave him a wave because I love planes and stuff like that. I'm a bit of a geek like that. And he waved back with his plane. So I thought, ah, oh, decent, nice one. And then I saw him turn around, and I was like, oh, hang on a minute, he's going to come back and do some sort of trick. So I got my camera out, I saw him do a loop round, and back round he came, maybe got fairly low, not too low, and done some sort of wave in the, in the aeroplane, and I was absolutely loving it. So that was like one of the highlights of Iman. Thanks to the Air Force pilot, he then set off on his training, but yeah, that was a decent way to start the morning. The coffee event was fantastic, and... We were going to just drive around the whole island on the one road. And a little aim is to find somewhere else to camp on the island. And first of all, we started off on the opposite side. On this side of the island, there's a big resort, which is quite expensive. And it's kind of known to have the best beach on the island, apparently, and where the turtles come in to lay some eggs. In the first 10, 15 minutes of driving, we found a little part of the beach with the same sort of setup as before, in a place near called Shinzi. And we thought, oh, that's decent. Not too bad of sand, lots of options. So we parked that on our heads for a bit. Quite calm beach as well. And we drove down the island. Now, when you put in Google, Missouri Island, you're going to see some idyllic beaches, like the Indian Ocean type beaches. To be honest, not seen that yet. And I wasn't sure. But when we drove down, there definitely is those type of beaches. And the best one I think we saw was called Biad Beach. And there's a sign for it. So you can turn off if you like. When you turn off the main road on the island, you are going to hit into Sand Road, just bear that in mind. They weren't too bad for our car, I don't think. The main road wasn't even the best at this point. It's not that well paved. But drove down as far as we could, got out, and it was idyllic white sand, warm water, some crabs on the beach, and not too much rubbish, I don't think we saw, hardly any. But in terms of the scenery, absolutely stunning. I just think that is the best beach that I've seen in Amman, and definitely on the island. Couldn't really camp there for a couple of reasons. No shade. Uh, the sea's quite rough. And also I don't want one of those crabs kind of crawling into our tent. So that was maybe a couple of reasons why. And you are in the middle of nowhere down there. If you need something emergency-wise, I'm not sure you're that close to anything. But breathtaking views. Loved it. Drove all the way back around the island. Saw some more beaches. Weren't as good as that. And pretty much on a loop. Probably took around two hours. Got lunch in there in the car, in the aircon, because it's too hot outside. 
again a super hot day we're talking mid 30s and this was actually be the last night we we're going to camp but we decided that everywhere we saw that day that we we're going to go back to the first place that we saw and camp there for the night but before setting up we headed back to the event and chat to the guy there who's running the calf he's from the philippines he gave us some good tips about philippines had a really nice chat had a good coffee and i really enjoyed um, spending some time in there there is this weird Omani culture of coffee is they don't get out their cars. They drive up in their car to the door, pretty much, wait for someone to come to see them, order their coffee or whatever they're ordering, and then wait for them. And some of them get a bit impatient. I think a couple of guys get impatient with this guy, keep beeping their horn. Um, but it's weird that they just can't be bothered to park the car and just come in anyway. A bit strange. The last bit of admin is we booked our ferry the next day for 7am. We decided that no real value staying another day. So we got back to the mainland early next day and the night in general was very nice. At that beach spot, a bit windy and really, really strong, loud winds, almost like on top of you. And no nature around and fairly painless to be fair. One thing we did notice as we got up next morning was there was some turtle sort of markings in the sand all the way down the beach and fairly close to our tent, I'd say 10 metres maybe 20 metres maybe so obviously the turtles came in I'm not sure if they were successful but they were definitely there on that beach on that morning uh, obviously you wouldn't know unless you're going to get up you know 1-2am to go and look for them we obviously didn't do that I probably didn't expect it either to be fair but kind of cool that a huge turtle was laying eggs right near our tent pretty much so that's pretty cool next morning got to the ferry 7am barely anyone on it maybe one or two cars dream to get on and got back within an hour overall I think Masira Island was a rogue and a random shout by us it wasn't on the plans but I think what came into the thinking was camping in 30 degrees you need a breeze or at least somewhere cool and I think the only two options are in the mountains which we couldn't do because we haven't got a 4x4 or on the coast and there wasn't really anywhere that we haven't been yet where we thought we could stay I mean I'm sure there is but like proper hotspots so we decided on Masira Island, and I thought the government ferry was very smooth, easy to book. You just need your passport and your details of your car. Uh, you can't book online, unfortunately, so you have to go into the office to book it yourself. Online is only Omani bank cards. Bit weird, not sure why. You can get an alternative local boat. Apparently it'll take one and a half to two hours, maybe half the price. Not sure where they leave from, but that is possible too. And Masira Island in general, I think it's got... Potential. I think they're going to probably develop that, I reckon, next 10 years. Lots of good beaches. They need to clean up some beaches. Some are quite dirty and some rubbish flying about. It's got an Air Force on there. I'm not sure if that's going to be good. And it's not that much developed. Uh, Hilf is the main town. where everyone kind of goes, I say. And there's little settlements throughout the island. And there's one decent road all the way around. Well worth it. If you've got a 4x4, you could probably camp anywhere. That'd be pretty cool. But as always with the Zaman trip, a 4x4 gives you more options. So I think overall, the desert camp was expensive. I liked staying there, but I couldn't justify the cost. But Masira Island was a great couple of days camping. I uh, enjoyed a different type of lifestyle. And the next part of the Oman trip was the last part, and that was going to Nizwa and Muscat before we flew out. Thanks for tuning in, and I'll see you for that next episode. Cheers. <laughs>